Hey guys, today we will talk about uh, anterior cerebral artery and uh, some interesting facts about it. For this video, the points of study are first is actual location of the ACA, second is origin in the end of the artery, and the third is a segment of the anterior cerebral artery. The fourth topic is a blood supply from the anterior cerebral artery, and the fifth point is the ACA syndrome. So this is a 3D view of the skull, skull bone and the arteries in the base of skull. Okay. You can see the bones clearly. You can see uh, arteries. Okay. And the some numbers are given in the 3D view uh, which is suggestive of uh, different different arteries. Now you can see the some other structures some other artery also but in this video we will only talk about uh, anterior cerebral artery so first of all you must know from where the anterior cerebral artery start okay in this the internal carotid artery of number nine this internal carotid artery will give a branch and this medial branch which is suggestive by the number one is a anterior cerebral artery. The left and right anterior cerebral arteries are communicating with each other by the anterior communicating artery. The number four is suggestive of the anterior communicating artery in this 3D view. And the lateral branch of the internal carotid artery is called as the middle cerebral artery. Now we will talk about the segments of the anterior cerebral artery. The anterior cerebral artery has a 5 total segment A1 to A5. The A1 segment. The A1 segment is a part of a anterior cerebral artery between the anterior communicating artery and origin point of the anterior cerebral artery from the internal carotid artery which is irrigate the quadric nucleus and the anterior limb of the internal capsule the a2 part the a2 part extend from the anterior communicating artery to the bifurcation forming the pericalosal and callosal marginal arteries from the a2 part the three new arteries are originated fpa ofa and rah the rah is a recurrent artery of the hobner and it is also called as a distal medial straight artery which is mostly supply of blood to the internal capsule and the other part of the brain also the ofa orbitofrontal artery and the fpa which is a frontopolar artery the a3 part is also termed as a pericalosal artery and it is the main terminal branch of the anterior cerebral artery okay and this a3 part uh, will go posteriorly in the pericalosal sulcus to the form uh, internal parietal arteries and the precuneal artery and the last A4 and A5 is a very small branches and it is called as a callosal marginal artery also. Now we will talk about a blood supply from the anterior cerebral artery. Okay, so the anterior cerebral artery supplies frontal lobe mainly medial part. Okay, and uh, superior medial parietal lobe front four fifth of the corpus callosum deep structures like uh, anterior limb of the internal capsules quadrant nucleus and the anterior part of the globus pallidus now we will discuss about the aca syndrome aca syndrome means the anterior cerebral artery syndrome now if the anterior cerebral artery being a narrow or uh, intracranial hemorrhage is developed from the rupture of the anterior cerebral artery the ischemic or hemorrhagic stroke is developed inside the brain 
the classical term used for this condition is known as ACA syndrome or anterior cerebral artery syndrome in the ACA syndrome if a1 segment of the anterior cerebral artery is affected and being narrow the mostly the presentation of the case is without any type of the symptom so patient is not coming with a, a classical symptoms of the anterior cerebral artery syndrome you can see this figure and you can notice that a a1 point if the a1 point become occluded the blood supply from the other side also can go to a uh, same part of the brain okay so it is called as a collateral circulation and due to this collateral circulation if the a1 segment but a uh, one only one sided one sided a1 segment is occluded there is a no damage to the brain because of the collateral circulation so patient cannot come with the, any type of the classical symptom of aca syndrome but if the a2 a3 a4 or a5 segments of the anterior cerebral artery is occluded and due to that if the ischemic stroke or hemorrhagic stroke occur then the classical symptoms present when the patient is come to your hospital the classical symptoms of the anterior cerebral artery are first lower limb sensory loss second a lower limb weakness and the paralysis also third the slowness fourth gait apraxia a gait apraxia is a term when the patient is having a difficulty in the initiating of the walking process okay which is called as a gait apraxia and many times some behavior changes also noted in the patient with the anterior cerebral artery syndrome but the main classical symptom is a contralateral sensory loss in the lower limb means the opposite side of the lower limb is affected by the symptoms